Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show... Cask have a new downhill helmet. Uh, we check out a bizarre transmission decoupler. Some absolutely beautiful tools from Park. And a bit of an update to that Push 11.6 shock. Okay, so straight into news, and um, first up is the launch of that new cask downhill helmet. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one for me, because I was always associated with cask with road, um, and they make some super light helmets, and that's kind of what they brought into the downhill thing. So in a size medium, I think it's about 778 grams. Um, I know that Ooh. Neil said it was exceptionally light when yes. he was using the thing, uh, in a video we launched actually over the weekend. Now it's got 18 vents, it's got exhaust vents, internal channels, it's super light, it's got a D-ring buckle, a uh, break-off peak, it's got all the features that you might want from a helmet. Uh, and it's pretty quirky looking as well, it's available in, I think it's four different colours, uh, all based around sort of the carbon fibre weave with different sort of uh, accents to it, and it's got like this cool goggle groove, I don't know if you saw that? Yeah, so I you, did. You can't put the goggle in the bad position, you can only put it in the good position. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, if Italians me. being the fashion police, who'd yeah. have thought? Oh, yeah, 100%. I was pretty surprised at that. Um, but on the on inside of the helmet, it's actually really nicely made. It's got like, um, like you say, it's got a button in internals rather than yeah. Velcro in. So it's designed to basically be pulled out and, and washed. Yeah. Uh, really nice system. There's a few shots of Neil riding in that helmet. Yeah. Um, so it's four sizes small, medium, large, and extra large. And they achieve that with two carbon shell sizes, um, two sizes of cheek pads, and four sizes of the inner liner. Uh, of which it's a five-piece EPS shell. And if you didn't watch that feature video we did about the safety standards and rigors a downhill hel helmet has to go through, I really st strongly recommend, after this, clicking on. It was a really, really cool video. Uh, just, do you know what? It's actually kind of shocking when you see those machines smashing those things repeatedly. Mm. Uh, the noise it makes when they're doing it with the weight. You know, you're talking a head weight that's about 15 pounds. Yeah. And I think it's just taking a hell of a hit repeatedly. You wouldn't want your head anywhere near that. So it's kind of <laughs> nice to see that they put them through that much testing. They really do. Yeah, it's impressive stuff. Also in the news, we've seen Push Industries, which were kind of still, I think they're going from boutique to kind of a bigger player in terms of suspension output. Yeah, definitely out back, I think. Yeah, their new 11.6 shock. So sticking with coil, but it's got some new internals featuring a hydraulic resistance bottom out, I guess. Oh, nice, yeah, um, yeah. So basically what it is, is a kind of a, an, an additional tube in, in the damper which basically increases hydraulic pressure as the piston goes into it. Ah, nice, so it almost ramps. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. So this is so they can, with a coil setup, which traditionally provides quite a linear suspension spring rate, yeah. they can fit it to more frames, ones that you know might even have different requirements. And it looks super cool. So is this uh, something as an alternative to like the rubber bumper that you would see on the shafts? Yeah, it, well, it means that basically it takes the load off that rubber bumper. Yeah. You've actually seen, um, the Italian company, who are completely for EXT. Oh, EXT, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they actually, on their ones, use a similar technology, this hydraulic bottom out, and they have a very, very small, half the size of a traditional kind of rubber bumper. And this is because it's actually not needed because it's got that hydraulic bottom out. It's just in case, kind just of Just in case, yeah. That's quite cool, actually. Um, I think we should probably have a closer look. Yeah, they to, look- To both of those, to be They honest. look lovely, really, really cool bit of kit. Available in a huge array of sizes, and what's really, really lovely, is they have quite an intimate relationship with um, Evil Evil bikes, and for that they're making one that is I think it's a forty-five mil stroke option. It's absolutely tiny. Oh, so that's specially for the Evil bikes, Just isn't it? Evil, yeah, yeah, I think Cal mentioned that. Yeah, really, that's really small, isn't it? Looks super cool, and has other similarities with the XT. Notably, it runs a really low pressure IFP to uh, give it a very, very supple, slick action. Mm, yeah, looks really, really well. Nice. It's slicker than a regular core shot. That's got to be pretty. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Um, actually, after I made that coil versus air video a while back, when I was just riding the two back to back, someone commented that Push did a hop up kit for for certain forks on the market to upgrade it with coil. Yeah. So might be going down that route as well. And have a little look and see what we can do with that. And also, we saw actually at Bespoke almost a year ago now, they did that kit where so the spring is compressed and the last part of the stroke, you can basically have an auxiliary almost like an air piston. Just at the top, yeah. just to yeah. add a bit of ramp up. So similar sort of things. I think it's people that acknowledge the great feeling that Cora can give you, but yeah. also it's There's inherent short limitations. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And um, and that's the best way to tackle a problem, I think. So Interesting. More yeah. power to them. Could be a part three to that video. Um, we shall find out. Uh, next up in news, I think this pleases all of us universally here. Uh, Parker got some more tools on the market. I know you are pretty excited about those new Allen keys. Mama Allen key. Um, oh, tell tell us about those Allen keys. I think um, you know Park makes some awesome tools, but in the last couple of years. 
people like Abby Tools have really kind of taken the charge on those cool, classy looking T handed handbags. Yeah, the stuff keys. that you really want to own, sort of. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. But now Park have come to the table, and boy, oh boy, are they packing. New talks on Allen Keys, and I sound like a bit of a nerd for just getting so <laughs> ramped up explaining it, but they do look fantastic. Also, and another thing I found myself getting all in a tiz over was their new bleed kits. Now, I am totally... Well, I'm with you on both accounts, but I'm especially with you on this. Yeah. I've been waiting for the day that Park have done this, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of got... It's a universal kit, really. They do one for dot and one for mineral. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's even got a clip so you can actually ha like, hold it onto your bike, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know you need like a third hand or a mate to hold it basically when you're bleeding your rear caliper. And even the caliper spacers, they've got these in different sizes, yeah. which that's super pleasing. And also no corners cut, everything's nice metal fixings. Everything's looks done as usual, usual to the high quality you'd expect from Park. There it is, looks really nice. There is a problem though. Go on. We don't have them yet. I've seen a box in Peter's workshop, Peter's our mechanic, but we don't have them here yet. We don't have them. No, hmm. just saying. All in good time, hopefully, hopefully so. Yeah. Now, one of kind of my favorite little manufacturers is Trick Stuff. And a brake company. Yeah, yeah, based in Freiburg, Germany. They kick out some of the most you know, artisan brakes, I think, available. I think artisan's the right word for that company, yeah. yeah. They're beautiful. Really cool guys as well. They're always happy to help. And something they're doing that is, I think, is a really good way to seize the initiative is sometimes they'll make these brakes and they'll see hours of CNC work, you know? Yeah. All this... Um, beautiful kind of coloring and stuff like that. And it might be technically perfect, but cosmetically not so. Okay, yeah. And so what they're doing is they're stealthing them out, murdering them all out in black, and then selling them as and when at reduced rate via the website. Yeah, that is awesome. I think it's really, really cool. That's really cool. I kind of, that's like the, the trick stuff we at supermarkets, um, selling obscure fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the same, isn't it? Yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. Now, on a, Bad joke aside, that's really cool actually. Yeah. And a cool way to do it. But it looks kind of good in the black finish as well. It does look really, really, yeah. really good. Nice. Awesome stuff. Good on you. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the drill, it's your version of the dirt shed, the place where you keep your bikes. Uh, show us the pictures of your bike caves and your bikes in there. Tell us where you're from. Uh, tell us what you love, all that sort of stuff. There's a link at the bottom of the screen right there, and there's a click through one underneath in the description. Uh, first up this week is from Eric in the Pacific Northwest. Somewhere I actually have wanted to ride a bike for quite a long time. Yeah, me Never too. actually got that far. Um, I will at some point, I'm sure. Look at this. So you've got a, the newest mm. a 90, uh, 2019 Kona CR29, the oldest bike, a 1983 Richie Everest. Mad, so you've been mountain biking a long flipping time. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Some old race face cranks as well. Some of those super strong ones. They were like forged ones. Yeah, great looking things. Nice looking workbench there. Classic old Kona, the old big thumbprint on that. Is that a jack holding up? That's a good, good improvisation. If that's a jack on a workbench, yeah, that's <laughs> Nice. Looking good, dude. Super cool. Same place, oh my word. Yeah, you've got a pretty kitted out workshop, haven't you? Yeah. Oh. Nice. You can definitely tell a mountain bike, you take out the rear car seats <laughs> and just stash them in your bike cave. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you put your bikes in the back of the car. Look at that pair of shivers up there. Yeah. And whatever they are, they're never set of Marzocchi, isn't they? Oh, here we go, oh, the Marzocchi collecting the bomber corner. Yeah. Look at that, so you've got a set of, uh, what are they, Z1 drop-offs, set of Z2s, I think they are, or are they Z3s, I always forget the difference between those. The shiver, I used to have a set of those shivers, and everyone at the time used to laugh at me because everyone had boxes, and I had the shivers, I was like, no, you don't stand them upside down, they're like way cooler. And everyone's yeah. like, now look how bendy they are. They'd hold the wheel between the legs and be like this for the handlebars. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> See, I heard a cool fact about retro Marzocchi forks. You know the triple eight? Yeah. Eight, eight, eight. Eight inches of travel. Yep. Eight inch brake rotor. Eight pounds. And eight pounds. Yeah. Yeah, such a cool thing. It is, but the fact they're eight pounds. It's just so... <laughs> I know, that's why I had to double but, check. But back then, I went on the product launch for those, and it was like, eight pounds. You're like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and now you're like, eight pounds. Whoa. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that is actually a really good stat. So I went on the, uh, on the product launch for that, actually way back, going off ski here. Um, I did my first run down A-Line at Whistler behind Brett Tippy with Wade Simmons behind me. No. I'd never ridden the trail at the time, and Brett Tippy was like, get the f*** out the way! <laughs> it was just like a steamroller. And Wade is literally up my ass, and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Actually, he wasn't up my ass, I shouldn't say it like that, should I? Someone might take that the wrong way. <laughs> what goes on in these product launches? <laughs> let's, just, let's just save that story for another time. <laughs> We'll just carry on. What was like. the tone doing all the way up here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
He's actually got one of those cool Kona, those processors. I had one of them. Absolutely loved it. I had the 111, the mm. 29 and short travel. Real cool bikes, man. Yeah, it works so well. I mean, I know that some of them had issues with bushings and stuff, but you kind of forgave them for how well they rode. Yeah. Although I've got to say, I mean, that one looks pretty good, and I think mm. the 153 looks nice, but the 111 I had looked like an IKEA carrier bag. The colours were just like... <laughs> Just disgusting. Yeah. But you rode it and you're like, I don't care. This okay. thing's like... Sh- just Down country, trend. baby. It was, 100%. Before it was even a thing. 100%. Sexy XE. Got it. They don't make it anymore. Yeah. So get on the case, Kona. Like, Evil have just put out that one again. Mm. And it is time. Damn, yeah. But um, yeah, nice selection of stuff going on there. And now it's over to Alistair in Berkshire. Hey, Dolly and crew. Loving the show. Now's my chance to show off my bike cave. And have a little nose in my toolbox, featuring my old CM32 with cherry wood handle. And I've got a 25 year old park tool chain checker, a pot of Judy butter. See, that's called Shram butter now. I think they copped out on that. They should have kept it should as Judy kept butter. It, as mm. it was just like it was a cool product with that name. Um, oh, loving your setup, dude. It's awesome. Yeah, really cool. Why was that a custom wrap D3? I was going to say, I don't recognize it. Yeah. It, it looks kind of like the ones that Brendan used to have, the orange yes. piece around the eyes. Yeah. Um, oh, you're into your, your proper job. That's good stuff, that. That's good. Oh, very nice. They do that in the pub next door, actually. Nice cable tie organisation. Oh, look at that top deck in there. Mm. Very is nice. A, is that a wood handled? Yes, yeah, that's the Shimano one, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's got a spare pin in, in the actual handle itself. Oh, nice. It's really flipping nice chain tool, yeah. actually. I've got a broken one. But I just can't, <laughs> I can't bear to get rid of it because it yeah. looks too nice. Uh, look at the colour coordination. Uh, zip, zip ties there. I couldn't even say zip ties then. I've had too many coffees today. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's cool. Kona man. roast. That's super cool. That's nice. And you've turned your part tool sign into a clock. Why haven't we oh. thought of that? Yeah, when you see it now, it's, it's quite cool. obvious. It, <laughs> it does look like <laughs> Why haven't Park thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's a part tool product I don't know about. <laughs> there's some monkey bars down the bottom? Uh, yeah, East Ends. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 50s. The nice 685, stuff. which was uh, considered crazy. The Judy Butter. Why, why SRAM? Why would you do that? You should have left it as Judy <laughs> Butter. SRAM Butter's not got the same ring. Oh, that's pretty yeah, trick. I've seen them before, really nice. No way, that's really cool. Pretty I've cool. seen those. Little CNC from, from Bike 98 at the NEC. I was at that same show. No way. It's a nice little call out when you get them in the fruit bowl to say, any other mountain bikers in the room? <laughs> we'll talk after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to have calloused hands. <laughs> <laughs> Wade, what are you doing here? <laughs> Again, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, good looking tool chest you got there, loaded with stuff. The old park super patches in there, classic tie lever collection. Good stuff, Alistair. Yeah, really nice cool, one, mate. Oh, and there's the bike. Loaded, there's your bike. There is something you're missing from your um, from your extensive tool collection, though. The e-bike workstand. Sandy had one of them in his workshop. I'm not seeing one it's in the flesh. We actually play with it. Like it makes perfect sense just for. A day-to-day mechanic, even regardless of e-bikes, to so just yeah. chuck a bike on, yeah. and you can get a bike so high you can work under the BB without even bending down. Would you trust the e-bike? Oh, dude, like this thing is <laughs> so solid. Uh, it's, it's it's really good, and I'm sure like bike shops around the world will be using those for health and safety reasons. Mm-hmm. But um, probably a little bit expensive to put in your garage. Yes, but still, still kind of cool. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, we? Hold on, this looks a little bit like. Um, our new set. <laughs> yeah, have you been in scoping it out? <laughs> so this is from Samuel in Montana. Wow. So you've got an Evil and you've got an Intense oh, Tracer 275. Decked. I know. Holy moly. And I'm hoping there's going to be another shot of that. So still more bike tools to acquire. I'm planning to put TV on the wall, but this is my bike cave and all round shop. I've dedicated this corner to all my gear for bikes and outdoor sports. Mate, it looks amazing. It's really, there's really cool. Decent woodwork going on in here. Loving all these like, purpose-built shelves. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Here's the evil. There's something about evils, There's isn't there? something about them, mate. Yeah. Although, I've got to say, I don't want to muddy your bike because it's really, really oh, nice. Here we go. But, but now go. that new one has launched, the old ones just look a bit rounder. Yeah, I know what you mean. I just think Not that, in a bad way. No. The new one, you know, the top tube is a lot more slender and it's a bit more of a direct route mm. into the seat tube. I've always liked the way that everything is just so low. Yeah. Similar to like the Da Vinci Wilson or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that low swing arm. We, and you just, it just looks like traction. You know their, their flip chips is something like um, low and extra low. <laughs> they don't have like medium <laughs> and high or whatever. No, great looking. Really bike. nice looking bikes, yeah. Decked as well, look at that. Dude, workshop looks amazing. Mm. I, hope it, I hope it's not gonna 
look better than our set. It'd be very, yeah, very can we come to yours? Um, yeah, right, yeah, maybe we'll come to yours and film the show instead. <laughs> so feel free to send us a ticket, but maybe not uh, right now. <laughs> uh, enough for this for now. Thanks, guys. Cheers. So now we have top mods. Now this is all the modifications you make to your bike. So it might be a full rebuild. It might be something like our first submission from Daniel, who's done quite a small part, something you might not even see when you're riding the bike, but it can make a big difference and tailor it to you. So what Daniel has done is basically manufacture a volume spacer for his fork. This is smart. Off his own bat. Because not all forks are available you know, to retrofit. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. I've had this before with old, old, in fact, he says a recon. I've had an old pair of recons that mm. I was going to do something similar to this and yeah. they've got around to it. Yeah. I've bonded on the 36s before they did. Yeah. For a customer, bonded a space <laughs> just onto the cap and drilled it through so you could still get the air. That's pretty cool. Stuff like that. But yeah. this is really, really nice. Basically explaining that he's a heavier rider, likes to ride aggressive trails and wants that support in the end stroke. Yeah. So... You know, he's he's done it himself. Yeah, it looks really good. So I kind of forget that they've got a sleeve on the inside. That's one of the reasons you couldn't fit them in. Hey, that's good work. That's really, really cool. Because you can get something that's a good workaround now. Is um, a formula do those? I think that was. Is it the Nerf or something like that? Yes, yeah, right. The soft one. The soft one. Yeah. And although they say it's only compatible with formula, might happen to be uh, compatible. It with might other happen so. as long as you get the yeah. diameter right. Yeah. But yeah, super, super cool. And it's just great to see somebody that. It's in tune with their bike and just good can do attitude. Yeah. That's great. Nice one. What else have we got? Oh my word, what oh, is this? Look at that bad boy. Wow, YT Capra CF27 free ride mullet edition. Wow. By mullet edition, I'm guessing he's um, not talking about his haircut, talking yeah. about the different size wheels. Yeah, so a larger wheel in the front can kind of rake out the bike a bit, more aggressive angles. So it's for Daniel in Munich. This isn't the same. Oh, so we've got Daniel and Rottenberg. Uh, different and Daniel. Daniel and yeah. <laughs> but this is, I think this might be what happens when you get Kushko and you get the green, green valves and you just think, to hell with it. Well, what else can I put on the screen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But very strict adherence to colour coding. Look at the stickers on the shot. Well, even, even where he shot the images. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. good colour coordination going on all round. Wow. So a red spring as well on that shock. And also green decal, yeah, on the yeah. shocks. Nice. Spank wheel, chain ring, stem, bars, saddle. My word, looks like a cool bike though. It looks really good, doesn't it? I'm quite surprised. Yeah. That spank kit looks pretty nice actually. I'm kind of interested by their vibro core bars. Mm. I think that's like a pretty sensible idea. Uh, vibro core, they've basically got some sort of foam on the inside, mm. they, essentially. I think it's come from Moto World, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They, they've had that for a few years. They even do it in their rims now. And the really cool thing about doing yeah. it in their rims is you can't get a, lip, a nipple lost in the, in the rim because it's all just full. Just drop it straight in. It sounds stupid. But it's no, safe, so if, it's brilliant. If you've ever built a wheel and you've lost an nipple now, you'll know how annoying it is trying to get it out again. Yeah. And it's rattling, you can see it by the hole in your eyes. <laughs> but yeah, this bike looks really cool. Beefy brakes on it as well, looks like a really capable bike. He's got some of the old fig rolls on there as well. Oh yeah, looking good. Nice. In a, in a good placement too. Dude, that looks, that's a nice trick looking bike. You spent a bit of time, a lot oh. of money on that. Yeah. That's for sure. What else have we got? We've got another custom job. This one's a bit closer to home, actually. Oh, yeah. So this this one's from Johnny in Edinburgh. So, I mean, a great ride in Edinburgh. We've got the golf here just on your doorstep in Elethan. Yeah. You know, easy drive up to the Highlands. My word. And so this is his Nuke Proof Mega 275 carbon frame and a complete build by the looks of it. So loaded nice. with Bergtech stuff on there. Cloud carbon saddle, Mark II Enduro stem, stem spacer kit, ride wide bars. Bartender Pro Grips, Penthouse, Flats, Pedals, DH22 Michelin tyres. Yeah. AXS on there, so it's got a full access setup. Flipping it, did you have spent some serious cash on this? 180mm fork as well. Oh. It's a big bike that now. Chris King Hubs too. Oh, yeah. dude. And it's all, it's very tasteful, this. It's very nicely done. Yeah. I mean, Petey's valve cores on there. Mm. Everything, yeah, you're right, it's very tasteful the way everything matches in just nicely. Kind of grey on those grips. Mm. That's a perfect match, isn't it? Yeah. That does look, oh, look at that. fantastic. A good shout out to your bike shop as well. Super, super cool. Wow. So we're just in quiet. Yeah, so we're awe. just too busy looking at your bike. We don't need to talk. I like the pictures of this. You know, 
the colour matched Exo cranks as well. Yeah, that's a nice detail. Could have had the red, but the grey actually looks it, way it classier. Looks well classier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's, the, there's the flat lay we wanted. Oh, Johnny, Sick. mate, this looks awesome. Yeah, really cool. Oh, Chris King. Oh. I don't think there's anything I'd expect different on that bike. I haven't tried a I haven't tried a mega with the coil shock funnily. I was always super blown away by the super deluxe. Yeah. Super blown away by the super deluxe. <laughs> oh my god, what am I like? I've always really enjoyed riding the super deluxe shock, yeah. is what I meant to say. I never really felt the need for a coil, but I'd be interested to try one. Yeah. I mean, you haven't got a mega at the moment, have you? No. Have I? That's my bike just there. Yeah, yeah. I mean really reactor is an incredible bike for, for what we tend to ride, but um I'd definitely be keen to revisit the Mega again now I've kind of gone up in travel, hmm. uh, certainly on the 290 side of things. Would you Would you go 29 again? Or would you do I think, bigger travel and smaller wheels? You know what, really pathetically, just for the sake of tyre politics yeah. and only having to have one size at home, yeah. I, would just stick, I would just stick with the same, which I know is a bit of a cop-out. But I No, it kind of makes sense. You can chop and change wheels between bikes yeah. as well, as you and need to. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. I mean, that in 29 is great. I really, really enjoy riding it. I have to say the 27 Mega... I, you know, loved it. I absolutely loved it. But I've got a feeling it was, Nukeproof seemed to just always kick out, no nonsense, just super fun bikes to ride. Yeah. I've got a feeling the 29 would be just great as well. I'd almost, I'd worry though, from my point of view, that the uh, the new 29, 290 is just too much. Mm. Like it's a big old bike. There's a lot, I mean, not physically in the size, mm. it's a massive travel bike. Mm. I don't think I could, I could push it hard enough. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's not a reason to not enjoy a bike like that, don't it, get me wrong. It's funny, eh? We, you know, I think when we talk about riding, you and I have about as polar opposite styles as it could get. <laughs> we should go on our reactors and talk, we should ride each other's and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, all right. And that could be a feature or something like that, because I think it's just so interesting. For me, I'm never scared of having too much travel. Yeah. Because I'm so, if you look at me on the bike, I'm actually quite a lazy rider. I just, ah, you know, I you get, know I get that pop too. and flow. Yeah, I, I think it's... I guess because when I started riding, basically you, you had no choice but to hop over stuff because yeah. otherwise you wouldn't finish the ride, you'd split your tyres and that. We used to, like, <laughs> 1.5 inch tyres we used to ride with. That's gravel tyres these days. <laughs> yeah, with tiny right. little rims and if you started hitting roots like you do today, you'd buckle your wheels. Mm. Honestly, it was like a preservation thing. I think that's kind of always ran through so I'd just skip around. Yeah. But then, then I got really into riding BMX and BMX tracks and stuff and I've always liked just like pushing into... Mm. I mean, at least how it feels in my head. I know it doesn't look that way. When no, honestly, right, but, but you can tell because you do generate speed in a way that I just, eyes up, heels down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. That's yeah, a bit of fun. We'll, we'll yeah, work an angle on that. Yeah, nice. Okay, now it's time to take a trip down memory lane and check out some rewind stuff. That is all, all the old stuff, basically. So if you've got any retro mountain bike gear, could be an old helmet, it could be some photos of yourself or perhaps your dad or an uncle or anyone you might know in a bike race of age, uh, send them in to us. We love to see that stuff. Again, links at the bottom here and links in the description underneath. Uh, first up, this is a real treat actually to see, uh, especially with a backdrop as well. Mm. Uh, we start with a backdrop. There's a set of uh, Marzocchi Z1s. Uh, I can't tell if that's the originals or the bands. I think it might be the originals on the left hand side. And a set of Rock Shots Quadras. That was my first proper suspension fork. Ooh. I had RSTs before those. And then the Rock Shots I was actually completely disappointed with because they're the ones that had elastomers in. The elastomers were about this long. <laughs> and you jumped off something and they bottomed out and you pulled up and it went tunk. Um, oh, no. Dreadful things. But they looked, <laughs> at a glance, they looked like the better Mag Forks, which had the air and oil dampers in them. And uh, me and my friends used to take off the little boots as well. Um, we were always told off for that because they didn't have very good seals. Yeah. And they used to like gun cup all the time, but they, look, they looked cool. Do you think boots will ever make a comeback? I don't know. Everything seems to go in cycles. I wouldn't be surprised. Five years' time. I can't. I think <laughs> boots, they've definitely got a place. I mean, I think if you're doing uplift riding and that, boots is actually makes a lot of sense. Riding things like the Mega Avalanche because they're flying rocks. Mm. I think all the damage you get to your stanchions, it stops that. Mm. But I think the problem with boots will always come when your fork gets wet and covered in mud, and everyone's like, oh, it keeps them protected. And it's like, well, it also holds it in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it kind of goes both ways. I think there's definitely, if I had a fleet of higher bikes, I'd probably be tempted to put boots on them mm. because people with higher bikes who treat my higher cars are just throwing yeah. on the floor and stuff. So there could Crash be something there. Yeah. Um, some old Maguras mounted on the wall there. And then, of course, then then you've got the bike, uh, Rocky Mountain Hammer. So I think that's probably a chromoly frame. We've got the amp fork on the front there. A pair of Ritchie WCS pedals by the looks of that as well. They're pretty rare. Um, 
I say that, but in a bit of, yeah, Richie Logic and the ability to spec. So 1996 Shimano M950 XTR, first generation V-brakes, a Salsa carbon brake booster. So a brake booster, that's even something that we don't even have anymore. Yeah. And so if you think that V-brakes, but the huge leverage these things had on them, <laughs> like so much leverage, that you're literally bowing your frame with the power of the brakes. So you had a brake booster that would hold those brake bosses basically in place. So every bit of power that you're putting through the brakes should go to the rim instead of bending the frame outwards. Uh, it seems bonkers, really. They, they went they went to that extent. Mm -hmm. But uh, really nice to see. And also, the old Maxxis tyre, so these would have been 60A, and you can tell because they've got the red rim around them. You never used to get on the stickier rubber tyres. Uh, really nice to see. And, oh, what I didn't know, this has got the old Rasta Chris King headset. Yeah. Just came in the three colours. And Presearch for yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I've got one of these to rebuild. Um, yes. and And, Everyone I've told that to has basically just laughed in my face because they're, they're fa <laughs> famous for leaking, apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all of this stuff I, I missed over the years of just like wanting to set those forks yeah. in the frame. And yeah, all my friends have basically laughed in my face. So we shall see how that goes. Good selection of stuff. I like mm. the little retro shrine there. It's mm. nice. Yeah, cool. And a pair of uh, early Avid speed dial brake levers as well. Very nice. Okay, next up is from Alexander. This is a 1996 GT LTS1 found on eBay. Um, found us on eBay and would like some info on what the bike is. All right, okay. It seems to be made of carbon with alloy lugs. Yep. Um, says on frame, uses single tube technology. Help me out with this one. All right, let's look in a bit more. Yeah, so this is an STS rather than an LTS. I uh, don't know what the single tube technology was. I don't remember GT actually using that. Uh, it was a thermoplastic frame and they're bonded into the alloy lugs. Uh, beautiful looking thing. Uh, the rear shock, as you can see, that actually had a trunnion mount on it. One of the early ones, so you could adjust the geometry by screwing the shock up and down on the mounting. Uh, and it's essentially a four bar linkage. So that was one of the earliest ones that had the uh, it's a cast titanium linkage at the back there. Super nice bit of kit that was. And the thing that kind of made them really identifiable for later ones is that massive pivot with the bushes. Yep. You ran them in a dry and it'd squeak. Ooh. You'd hear your friend coming down the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty nasty things if you didn't look after them. Uh, they did need a bit of TLC, but lovely looking frame that. And then of course they did the carbon, sorry, the thermoplastic downhill version that had the interrupted seat tube, like crazy angle to allow for the rear wheel travel. And then later after that came the Lobo, which were famous for braking. Yeah, lovely looking frame that, and it was uh, the sister frame was the full aluminium version, which is just called the LTS. Um, LTS stands for Linkage Tune Suspension. The previous bike was RTS, which is Rocker Tune Suspension. And essentially, it's just a four bar link, so it's got the classic um, four bar layout with a chainstay pivot there, also known as the horse link. Uh, super good bike back in the day, and that looks like a really good condition one, so uh, definitely, definitely renovate it, I'd yeah. say. Um, I'd be quite surprised if that shock has still got oil left in it because uh, the shoe, basically a massive amount of leverage on them on those ones. They're famous for sort of leaking. Yeah. But it does look so good. It does look good. It does look very, very, very nice. Fuck. They're so expensive, those things, back in the day. Um, okay, next up is from Dennis. This is the bike I bought in 1999, a limited edition Rocky Mountain Element. Whoa, we've got some Votec forks on there. Never even um, heard of Votec. Yeah, um, they were pretty rare. I mean, it's got Spengel wheels on there. Everyone's uh, when Spengel launched recently, they're like, "Yeah, we've just done this." It's like, "Yeah, I kind of remember this from back in the day." <laughs> <laughs> and look, there they are again. But pretty crazy piece of kit. So that was a faux bar. Uh, looked a little bit like a, a four bar design, uh, but technically it's just a single pivot with a linkage driven shock. Uh, you've just got the uh, chain stay, seat stay mounted linkage. There just to sort of manipulate the leverage on the shock there. Mm. Uh, Synchros cranks, they were mega sort of after. They also had the Synchros stem. Yeah, and the forks are pretty rare. Early Fox Vanilla float shock there. It looks so old, doesn't it? The shock's crazy. Yeah. It looks just like a kind of coke, eh? Yeah. Probably felt like one as well, to be honest, <laughs> compared to what we have now. And that's a 46 tooth chambering. Who needs a 46 on a, on a mountain bike? It just sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. And there you go, there's a Votec fork. Wow. Bizarre looking things, aren't they? Almost Look. looks a bit like a motorbike style yeah. fork. I mean, obviously, the twin crown, but the way motorbike forks don't have a real stem, they've got like a headstock style mm. system. Really interesting, that. Yeah. It just keeps on giving. It's just more in front and more in front. I don't know how I feel about it. You say interesting. I I associate the word interesting with, um, you know, when a relative buys you a Christmas present, you're not really sure about it, and you're like, oh, mm. that's interesting. <laughs> it actually means like, oh, I hate this and return it as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just. 
I don't know, I think the bike is quite quite nice and classy. And of course, the fork is mental for back in the day. And it does look good when you see it as a whole, but mm. when you look at it closer up, it's just a bit of an odd looking beast. Don't know much of the history about the Voto fork. Remember seeing them here and there. Um, and the Spengel wheel, well, and we'll leave that one there, shall we? But, uh, <laughs> But, uh, super nice to see that. So thanks for sending that one in, Dennis. And uh, thanks everyone for all the old stuff. Okay, now time for Tech of the Week. A uh, bit of an interesting one. I guess you could call it a transmission decoupler. Uh, oh, an active spider is, I think, what they're calling it. So it's from O-Chain. A new company, I've not heard of them before. No. was checking them out on Instagram. I've seen a few people, a few far friends basically talking about them. So this is it on screen. It looks a little bit like a spider. Um, only the fact that you can have three different degrees of rearward motion, rear, backward motion. Right, okay. Um, effectively allowing the, the transmission to decouple. So if you skip back a few videos, uh, quite a few videos in fact, to when um, I don't know, Aragorn snapped his chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everyone started realizing, hold on a second. So if there's no, no effect of the transmission on the suspension, the suspension is going to feel really good. Yeah. And you can't deny that. Um, whatever bike design you have, there's going to be some sort of effect of the chain, whether it's under compression or extension, whatever. So people started looking at decoupling devices. So Canyon, I think, did it first with yes, a, an actual thumb interest. shifter yes. based one. You can actually literally disconnect the cassette action, I think it was, like yep. the pulls or something. I don't really remember how it worked. Um, and then Neil and I did the basic version where you just take off on your sprockets. Yeah. Basically put space in, the change your gear. chain onto it so it's a neutral gear, yeah. Uh, now these guys are offering this. Um, can't say how it actually works without seeing it up close, but it looks like it's almost like a ratchet and the elastomer yeah. rubbers it comes with allow for, I think it's six, nine and 12 degrees of rearward rotation. Which is, this is something that, and maybe it's me, and maybe it's something that I don't quite understand or don't appreciate the nuances of. But for me, I tend to just like ride my bike. I'm not gating BMX style, yep. I'm not racing four cross. Yep. And so I sometimes worry that and this, this is great, you know, decoupling. But a lot of free hubs getting to more and more instantaneous engagement. And I sometimes worry, is that what we actually want? Or is it just a really nice way to, a neat number to put on a hub and say. You're not the first person that's mentioned this with the free hub thing. That's really yeah. interesting. Because yeah. why, and also this, it seems that 12 degrees being the biggest. Mm. Doesn't seem if you coupled that with an instant engagement hub, where they're only getting twelve degrees of. I think you're right. The hub might have a factor in this. And then so, it's not actually that much compared to just yeah. running a hub that doesn't have. Well, do you know what? These, I think we, I think we need to try one yeah. just to see what the fuss is about. But but something I found interesting they said was uh, one of the downhill riders who was testing it. They actually had to go up fifty pounds in a spring rate wow. on a shot because basically the effect on whatever bike that was mm. unnamed actually they said uh, obviously put a bit of pressure on your front foot without realising it. Yeah. Just under compression, and by basically removing that from mm. the equation, you had to go up slightly in spring rate. I mean, or perhaps maybe he could go up in spring rate have a firmer bike in the middle end stroke, but without sacrificing small bump. Potentially, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, I think it's super cool and good on them. There's not, I remember a system that came out of France maybe three or four years ago, where it was constantly rotating and you could yeah. change gear oh, whilst not yeah, pedaling. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called. But I think it's really cool that people are exploring this. I'd certainly like to give it a go. Well, there's definitely some bikes that suffer from it more than others yes. as well. You can definitely feel it on a bike if uh, you're, only, you're almost like pedal jack under mm. compression. Yeah. It's a strange feeling, and if your bike does have it, I could see that that might be attractive to you. Yes, totally. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to try one. So uh, if you're out there and you're viewing, and get in touch. Yeah, we'd love to try one, big time. I noticed that you've got um, that canyon over there that we've got in for video. So that's a 130 yeah. mil bike. 130 29 and, and that's also a 130 mil bike. 130 29 Yeah. <laughs> same, same, but different. <laughs> Yeah, What's going on there? I mean, what is a trail bike now? That is basically nipping at the heels of an enduro bike. Yep. And that is so light and efficient. You want to ride it all day. And I'd, I'd be tempted to take that to a cross country race and that to an enduro race. I can see your destiny right here. I think you've just called it on the spot. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see Henry do that, let us know in those comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging around. Yeah, cheers guys. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>